Humans blew up alien ships. Alien guts splattered on the debris in space. When humans joined the war, everyone cowered in fear. Captain Nathan Porter stood on the bridge of the UES Relentless. His ship emerged from warp space near the Elysian homeworld. The ethereal Elysians were losing a brutal war against the ruthless insectoid Brunters. In a desperate plea, the Elysians asked the newly spacefaring humans for help. They offered advanced tech in exchange for human soldiers to fight and die. Nathan's human fleet approached the arrogant Elysian ships. An Elysian commander named Primus greeted them with condescension. He ordered the primitive humans to the back of the fleet formation. Nathan positioned his ships at the front instead. This greatly annoyed Primus. Primus watched smugly as thousands of organic Brunter ships attacked the human vanguard. He expected the Brunters to quickly slaughter the humans, letting his Elysians strike from the sides. If the humans failed here, the war would be lost. The Brunters would butcher the Elysians next. The future of the galaxy hinged on this battle. But Primus was in for a big surprise about human capabilities. The bridge of the UES Relentless was a hive of activity as the battle raged around them. Weapons officers shouted out target coordinates while the navigation crew deftly maneuvered the ship through the chaos. Amidst the cacophony, a distress call cut through the noise. Captain Porter, we're receiving an emergency transmission from an Elysian ship, the communications officer reported. They're under heavy fire and requesting immediate assistance. Nathan's eyes narrowed as he studied the tactical display. The besieged Elysian vessel was located on the far side of the battlefield, well away from the main engagement. Primus's voice crackled over the comm channel, his tone laced with irritation. Human ships, maintain your formation. We cannot afford to break rank and leave our flank exposed. Nathan hesitated for a moment, weighing his options. He knew that disobeying Primus's direct order could have serious consequences, but the thought of abandoning allies in need went against everything he believed in. Helm plot an intercept course to the Elysian ship, Nathan commanded. Comms inform the Elysians that help is on the way. As the Relentless peeled away from the main fleet, a small group of human ships fell into formation behind it. They raced towards the stranded Elysian vessel, weapons primed and ready. The scene that greeted them was one of utter devastation. The Elysian ship was adrift, its hull riddled with scorch marks and gaping holes. A swarm of Brunter fighters buzzed around it like angry hornets, pouring relentless fire into the crippled craft. All ships form a defensive perimeter around the Elysian vessel, Nathan ordered. Lay down covering fire and give them a chance to escape. The human ships surged forward, their weapons blazing to life. They formed a protective circle around the Elysian ship, absorbing the brunt of the Brunter assault. The withering barrage of human firepower forced the Brunters to retreat, scattering their formation. Primus's face appeared on the viewscreen, his features contorted with rage. Captain Porter, what do you think you're doing? I gave you a direct order to maintain formation. Nathan met Primus's gaze unflinchingly. I will not abandon allies in need, Commander. We're here to fight alongside the Elysians, not watch them die. Before Primus could respond, the sensor officer's urgent voice filled the bridge. Captain, we have incoming warp signatures. Multiple Brunter dreadnoughts emerging from hyperspace. The viewscreen shifted, revealing a group of massive Brunter ships, each one dwarfing the human and Elysian vessels. Their hulls were bristling with weapons, and their very presence seemed to darken the starfield around them. Primus's face paled, and his earlier bravado evaporated. All ships retreat immediately! We cannot engage those dreadnoughts head on! But Nathan had other plans. Negative, Commander. We're not running from this fight. All human ships engage the dreadnoughts directly. Target their weak points and keep them off balance. The Elysians hesitated their ships wavering uncertainly. They feared that the humans' reckless tactics would doom them all. But as they watched the human vessels fearlessly charge towards the Brunter behemoths, they felt a surge of inspiration. Reluctantly at first, but with growing determination, the Elysian ships fell in behind their human allies.
The battle that followed was unlike anything the galaxy had ever seen. The human ships, tiny in comparison to the Brunter dreadnoughts, wove through the enemy formations with incredible speed and agility. They struck at critical weak points, darting in and out of range before the Brunters could lock on. The Elysians, emboldened by the humans' bravery, fought with renewed vigour. Their ships danced alongside the human vessels, their weapons firing in perfect sync. Together, they chipped away at the Brunter armour, slowly but surely wearing down their defences. Suddenly, a massive explosion rocked the battlefield. One of the Brunter dreadnoughts, its hull breached by a sustained barrage from the human ships, erupted into a ball of flame. The shockwave rippled outwards, sending debris careening in all directions. The Brunters, thrown into disarray by the loss of their flagship, began to falter. Their formation crumbled as the human Elysian alliance pressed the advantage, pouring relentless fire into the enemy ranks. Slowly, inexorably, the Brunter ships began to turn tail and flee. The once mighty dreadnoughts limped away from the battlefield, their hulls battered and scarred. The human Elysian fleet surged forward, chasing down the retreating Brunters and hammering them with every weapon at their disposal. On the bridge of the Relentless, the crew erupted into cheers. They had done the impossible, turning the tide of battle against overwhelming odds. Nathan allowed himself a small smile, his eyes locked on the viewscreen as the last of the Brunter ships disappeared into the void. The Elysian High Council Chamber was filled with an uneasy silence as the battle reports flooded in. The holographic displays showed the human ships, tiny specks against the vast expanse of space, fearlessly engaging the Brunter dreadnoughts. Elysian commanders watched in disbelief as the humans weaved through the enemy formations, striking at critical weak points with surgical precision. As the Brunter ships retreated, the council members exchanged glances of begrudging admiration mixed with apprehension. They had underestimated the humans, dismissing them as primitive upstarts. But now, faced with the undeniable proof of their valour and effectiveness in combat, the Elysians were forced to acknowledge their allies' strength. Primus, his pride wounded by the humans' success, stepped forward. We cannot allow the humans to overshadow our own military prowess, he declared, his voice echoing through the chamber. We must reassert Elysian dominance and prove that we are still the superior force in this alliance. The council members murmured in agreement, their unease growing at the thought of the humans' expanding influence. Primus continued, I propose a joint operation to seize the Brunter outpost on Xanthus Prime. It is a heavily fortified position, but one that holds immense strategic value. We will take the lead in this assault, with the humans following our command. Nathan, who had been observing the Council's deliberations, sensed the Elysians' discomfort with human leadership. He knew that pushing too hard could fracture the already fragile alliance. With a measured tone, he addressed Primus, very well, Commander. We will follow your plan and support the Elysian forces in this operation. The combined human Elysian fleet emerged from warp space near Xanthus Prime, the Brunter outpost looming before them. The planet's surface was a patchwork of fortifications and weapon emplacements bristling with defences. Swarms of Brunter fighters buzzed around the outpost, ready to meet any incoming threat. Primus, his confidence buoyed by the Council's support, ordered the Elysian ships to commence a frontal assault. Nathan, studying the tactical displays, noticed the outpost's advanced defence systems and the large concentration of enemy forces. He opened a comm channel to Primus, his voice filled with concern. Commander, I strongly advise against a direct attack. The outpost's defences are too strong, and we risk heavy casualties. But Primus, his pride overriding his judgment, dismissed Nathan's warnings. We are Elysians, Captain Porter. We do not cower before the enemy. Commence the attack. The Elysian ships surged forward, their weapons blazing as they engaged the Brunter defences. But as they closed in, the outpost's weapon systems sprang to life, unleashing a barrage of fire that seemed to anticipate the Elysians' every move. The Elysian ships were quickly overwhelmed, their shields failing under the onslaught. Nathan, watching the battle unfold with growing alarm, realized that the Brunters must have adapted to Elysian tactics and technology. 
They had laid a trap, and Primus had walked right into it. With a heavy heart, Nathan gave the order, All human ships fall back and regroup. We need to reassess our strategy. Primus, his ships taking heavy fire, stubbornly refused to retreat. Negative, Captain Porter. We will not abandon this fight. All Elysian ships press the attack. But it was a futile effort. The Elysian ships, outmatched and outgunned, fell one by one, their hulls breaking apart under the relentless Brunter assault. Primus's ship, its shields failing, took a direct hit from a Brunter plasma cannon. The once proud vessel erupted into a ball of flame, scattering debris across the battlefield. Nathan, his heart heavy with the loss of Elysian lives, knew that he had to act quickly. He turned to his weapons officer, his voice filled with determination. Prepare a volley of EMP missiles. Target the outpost's defense systems and communication arrays. The human ships, still outside the range of the outpost's weapons, launched a barrage of missiles. The projectiles streaked through space, their warheads detonating in a series of blinding flashes. The outpost's defenses flickered and died, its systems disabled by the electromagnetic pulse. Nathan then turned to his tactical officer. Deploy the drone swarm, hit them hard and fast while they're disoriented. From the human ships, a cloud of small, nimble drones burst forth, each one armed with rapid-fire plasma cannons. They descended upon the outpost like a swarm of angry wasps, darting through the Brunter formations and unleashing a hail of deadly, accurate fire. The Brunters, caught off guard by the sudden assault, scrambled to mount a defense. But the drones were too quick, too maneuverable. They wove through the enemy ranks, picking off targets with ruthless efficiency. The Elysian ships, seeing the opening created by the humans, regrouped and launched a coordinated assault on the outpost's weakened defenses. Their weapons, no longer hindered by the advanced Brunter systems, found their marks with devastating precision. Together, the human Elysian forces overwhelmed the Brunter defenders, their combined might proving too much for the enemy to withstand. The outpost's defenses crumbled, its fortifications reduced to smoldering ruins. As the last of the Brunter resistance was crushed, Nathan opened a comm channel to the remaining Elysian ships. The outpost is ours. Well done, everyone. This victory belongs to us all. The Elysians, their ships battered but still intact, acknowledged the message with a mix of gratitude and solemnity. They had paid a heavy price for this victory, with many of their own lost in the battle. But they had also learned a valuable lesson about the strength of unity and the power of human ingenuity. As the human Elysian fleet secured the outpost and began to assess the damage, Nathan couldn't help but feel a sense of bittersweet triumph. They had won the day, but the cost had been high. He knew that the road ahead would be long and fraught with challenges, but he also knew that together, humans and Elysians could face whatever the Brunters threw at them. In the aftermath of the hard-fought victory at the Brunter outpost, the human Elysian alliance took a moment to catch their breath. Soldiers clapped each other on the back, medics tended to the wounded, and engineers sifted through the wreckage for anything useful. Nathan and his team got to work analysing the captured Brunter technology, hoping to gain some insight into their enemy's capabilities. They cracked open damaged drones, dissected shattered weapon systems, and pored over salvaged data cores. What they found sent a chill down their spines. Captain, you need to see this, Lieutenant Ava Patel called out, her voice tight with tension. Nathan rushed over to her workstation, where a holographic display showed a series of schematics and technical readouts. The Brunters. They've been reverse-engineering Elysian tech, Ava explained, pointing to the telltale signatures. That's how they've been able to counter Elysian tactics so effectively. They've been studying their enemy and adapting their own technology to match. Nathan frowned, his mind racing. But how did they get their hands on Elysian tech in the first place? Ava hesitated, then brought up another set of data. That's not all, sir. Look at these communication logs we recovered. Nathan leaned in, his eyes widening as he scanned the data. The logs showed evidence of Brunter operatives embedded within the Elysian government 
passing along classified information and sabotaging military operations from within. They've infiltrated the Elysian High Council, Nathan breathed, his voice a mix of disbelief and anger. That explains how they always seem to be one step ahead. They've got inside help. Nathan knew he had to bring this information to the Elysians immediately. He gathered his evidence and requested an audience with the High Council, hoping that they would see the gravity of the situation and take action. But when Nathan presented his findings to Primus and the other council members, he was met with a wall of skepticism and hostility. You expect us to believe this, this fantasy, Primus sneered, his eyes narrowing. The great human captain trying to undermine our authority with baseless accusations. The other council members murmured in agreement, their expressions ranging from doubtful to outright hostile. Nathan tried to reason with them, pointing to the evidence and urging them to investigate further, but Primus cut him off, his voice dripping with disdain. I think we've heard enough of your lies, Captain Porter. It's clear that you and your kind are not to be trusted. You seek to sow discord and chaos within our ranks, to weaken us for your own gain. Primus turned to the other council members, his voice rising with righteous indignation. I move that we expel the humans from our space, effective immediately. They have no place in our alliance. To Nathan's shock, the council voted in favor of Primus's motion, their fear and paranoia overriding their reason. They ordered the human fleet to depart Elysian space within the next solar cycle or face the consequences. Nathan stormed out of the council chamber, his mind reeling with frustration and anger. After everything they had done, after all the sacrifices they had made, this was how the Elysians repaid them? He gave the order for the human fleet to prepare for departure, his heart heavy with the knowledge that they were abandoning their allies to the mercy of the Brunters. But just as they were about to depart, Nathan received an encrypted message on a secure channel. It was from a group of Elysian rebels who had seen through Primus's lies and believed in the human's cause. Captain Porter, we know the truth about the Brunter infiltration, the message read. We have evidence that could expose the traitors in our midst, but we need your help. Please, don't abandon us now. Nathan hesitated, torn between his duty to his own people and his desire to help the Elysians who had stood by them. In the end, he knew he couldn't turn his back on them. He made a decision that would change the course of the war. Nathan ordered the majority of the human fleet to return to Earth, while he and a hand-picked team of elite soldiers and engineers stayed behind to assist the Elysian rebels. They went underground, working in secret to gather evidence and recruit supporters. They moved through the shadows, always one step ahead of Primus's security forces, slowly building a case against the corrupt High Council. As they delved deeper into the conspiracy, they uncovered a truth that shook them to their core, the Brunter infiltration went far beyond the Elysian government. The insectoids had been manipulating the war from the very beginning, playing the Elysians and humans against each other for their own twisted purposes. Nathan and the rebels exchanged grim looks as they pored over the damning evidence. They knew they were up against a foe more cunning and ruthless than they had ever imagined. But they also knew that they couldn't back down now, not when the fate of both their species hung in the balance. They steeled themselves for the fight ahead, knowing that they were the only ones who stood between the Brunters and total domination. It would be a battle fought in the shadows, a war waged with secrets and lies as much as guns and ships. But they were ready, they had to be. The future of the galaxy depended on it. The Elysian capital was in chaos. Alarms blared, soldiers ran to their posts and civilians cowered in their homes, as Nathan and the rebel forces stormed the High Council chambers. They'd spent weeks planning this moment, gathering supporters and stockpiling weapons. Now armed with the knowledge of the Brunter infiltration, they were ready to strike. Nathan led the charge, his pulse rifle blazing as he cut down the guards at the entrance. The rebels poured in behind him, engaging the Council's loyalists in a fierce firefight. Energy bolts crisscrossed the chamber, scorching the walls and shattering the ornate furniture. Push forward, Nathan shouted over the din of battle. 
We need to secure the council members. The rebels surged ahead, taking heavy casualties but slowly gaining ground. Nathan spotted a group of councillors trying to flee and sprinted after them, dodging and weaving through the crossfire. He caught up to them in a side corridor, levelling his rifle at the cowering Elysians. Surrender and you won't be harmed, he growled. But as he approached, one of the councillors lunged at him with a hidden blade. Nathan reacted on instinct, putting a bolt through the attacker's chest. The councillor fell to the ground, dead before he hit the floor. Nathan turned back to the others, his eyes hard. Anyone else feeling brave? The remaining councillors quickly dropped their weapons and raised their hands in surrender. As Nathan secured the prisoners, his calm crackled to life. Captain, we've got a problem, came the voice of Ava Patel, his second in command. Primus is trying to escape. He's heading for the hangar bay. Nathan cursed under his breath. I'm on my way. Keep him contained. He sprinted through the halls, following the signs to the hangar. When he arrived, he found Primus cornered by a group of rebels, his once pristine robes singed and tattered. It's over, Primus. Nathan called out, aiming his rifle at the Elysian leader. Surrender and you'll get a fair trial. Primus laughed a harsh grating sound. You fool, he spat, you have no idea what you've done. We know about the Brunter infiltration, Nathan countered. We know you've been working with them. You think this is just about the Elysians? Primus sneered. The Brunters have been playing you from the start. They've infiltrated your government, your military, your entire society. This war was never about conquest. It was about weakening both our races, making us ripe for the taking. Nathan felt a chill run down his spine. You're lying, he said, but there was a tremor of doubt in his voice. Am I? Primus grinned, a vicious, predatory expression. Go ahead, run back to your precious earth. See how long it takes for the Brunters to crush your pathetic defences. Nathan hesitated, his finger tightening on the trigger. He wanted to put a bolt right between Primus's eyes and be done with it. But if what the traitor said was true... He lowered his rifle, his mind racing. If the Brunters had infiltrated the human government, then returning to Earth would be playing right into their hands. He'd be walking into a trap, leaving the Elysians to fend for themselves. But if he stayed, if he helped the Elysians rebuild and prepare for the coming war, then maybe, just maybe, they'd have a chance. It was a slim hope, but it was better than the alternative. Nathan turned to his rebels, his expression grim. Secure the prisoner, he ordered, and get me a line to the relentless. We have a lot of work to do. As the rebels hauled Primus away, Nathan looked out over the ruined city, his heart heavy with the weight of his decision. He knew that many would call him a traitor, a deserter, but he also knew that this was where he was needed most. The road ahead would be long and hard, and there was no guarantee of success. But with the Elysians and humans united, for the first time in centuries, they had a chance. And that was worth fighting for. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.